good evening everyone so happy to connect with you all virtually once again i think uh, the last time we met was in uh, september at least i joined the meetup in uh, september uh, last time with another topic now uh, this time the topic is a little different so we thought uh, we would want to talk about observability because that is what is picking up now so um we have come up with this uh, topic as future of observability in an experience driven economy so to give you a background of uh, about myself so i have been with the company zoho as a company for the past uh, 22 years now so i started as a software developer and now as a director of product management handle various products so i am saying that here is most of the topics that that i am sharing or most of the points that i am discussing here are all based on the experiences that uh, i have uh, gathered working on various products at various stages in the product life cycle as well so with that note we'll uh, get into the agenda so the topics that i'll be covering today are importance of digital experience because we are talking about experience so i would like to touch upon that uh, experience part a bit and then go move on to observability all about observability what is observability what is monitoring what it has to do with sres and then what are the pillars of observability how to achieve observability and what i see as a future so i'll keep this as a 30 to 40 minute talk and then take questions meanwhile feel free to post your questions i'll try to answer them towards the end of the session digital experience so when we uh, when i hear this word experience it could be in any form right the experience is a, a customer experience or a user experience digital experience employee experience there are various terminology various forms we can give this experience as but when i hear this word or when i uh, when i see this word i was reminded of this book by kathy sierra the book named badass making users awesome i'm not sure how many in the room has already read this book um it would have been very good if I, it was a physical meeting and i was able to interact and uh, discuss things with you but if you have not read i would advise uh, it's a good read it will give you a different perspective of how you have to look at your customer experience or how you have to what what things have to be given importance so kathy sierra is a, a blogger and um, now she's a programmer and converted to a blogger and then she starts writing books and this is one of my favorite books as well so in one of the one of the pages in the books there is this interesting question which goes like this which would you rather have a user feel and she has given four options for this and she has uh, asked what would you want your user to feel it could be anything that you do it could be the product that you are developing it could be a software it could be uh, any product any anything that you do we have customers so what would you want your users to feel not just say feel so that's the question and uh, these are the answers the answers goes like this option a do you want the user to feel the product is awesome he or she has to have a feeling assume you are the product owner do you want them to feel this product is awesome or this company is awesome the company that has built the product is awesome do you want to have the user have that feeling or this brand is awesome the brand that owns the company or the company that owns the brand that has de developed the product this brand is awesome you can choose only one op option out of this might look like a tricky question but she goes on to say that none of this she gives one more option which she feels you have to understand which you want your user to feel and that is i am awesome keep the user in the front make them feel that they are awesome when they use the product when they use the particular brand that belongs to that company but if you think people don't actually talk like that right nobody says i am awesome because of a product they only say i love this product i like this very much this app is amazing that's what people says she goes on these are all snippets from the book i've just taken screenshots and i've just shared it's an amazing book so it goes on to say that when he or she says the product is amazing you should see what it does they mean 
I am amazing. You should see what I can do with it. That's what they mean. So when you have such a user, such an awesome user, when if you can make the user awesome with your product, they, if you make them feel that they are awesome, what will happen? When a user feels I am awesome, when they do what they do, so they become your loyal customers. And they will tolerate problems. They will be okay with even there are, if there are some issues. They will go about evangelizing, talking to people about the pro product that they use, and they will go about convincing others as well, free marketing. They will resist competition. They will not go with any other competition. There are so many other things discussed in the book as well. So they'll form groups, communities, and, to and community of users to discuss about the product that they are using. So there are n number of things that they do when the user feels that they, they are made to feel they are awesome. So that is the secret for sustained success. You can, it's not important, just important to be successful and in the first attempt. Sustained success is what is important in any product that we do. And that is possible only with successful users and have the, when they feel that they are awesome. And that comes with experience. That's what we have been trying to say. We cannot have some definition for it because the experience comes in different format. It could be in the form of uh, the email that you write to them. It could be in the form of a small customizations that, that is available in the product. It could be in the form of some automations that are already taken care in the product UI. We can say in any form, the, the phone call that you attend, you talk to the customer. But these are all the different experiences and you, you have to improve them if you want to have better product results. So user experience is important. When we talk about user experience, there is this uh, Forbes article which I read, which talks about the 100 different facts for about digital transformation and user experience. Now that the whole world is moving digital, so there, are, there, are, there were 100 different facts that were discussed, and I have just taken five of them. So 89% of companies have adopted digital first strategy. They are just starting to think digital. They want to use directly only the cloud. They are going with only the cloud adoption. 86% of companies believe cloud technology is critical to digital transformation. So you want to move digital. There's no point in using older technologies. You have to adapt to newer technologies that are coming up and try use them. That is when you will be able to run the run along in your transformation journey. 67% of customers will pay more for a great experience. That's what we have been experience that we have been talking. If you're going to give them a better experience, if you're going to make them feel awesome, they are ready to pay more for you. 87% of companies think digital will disrupt their industry. So they have started moving that on premise to cloud. And it is not just small businesses or uh, uh, the startups. Even enterprises have felt the need of it and they have started moving to the digital cloud platforms. So 83% of enterprise workloads are in the cloud. So all these put together prove that digital experience matters. And we are in this era of experience-driven economy in the different forms that I have talked about. Keep in mind user experience customer experience, the digital experience is very important. So now that we have talked about the experience part, let's move to observability. All, all that I have to share about observability. We always have a confusion between observability and monitoring. What, what this observability means? It's only the, um, we monitor, that's what it, right? So when I was reading through some article, uh, a, a representation or uh, the following thing that came to my mind was observability is the base for any system. If you want to monitor your system, the system has to be observable. They have to have the capability to give metrics. You can only monitor if the system has those possibilities of giving away the metrics. If you are monitoring uh, your website the monitor, or if you are monitoring an application, the application must be able to have the protocols that can through which you can take the monitoring metrics. So the base is observability. And only if the system is observable, you can monitor. So that's the base. On top of it is monitoring. So the system that is observable can be monitored and you collect various metrics. It could be performance metrics. It could be availability metrics. All metrics that are needed for your monitoring of your system, you collect. There are humongous data that is available. Because now 
the everything is in the cloud there is huge data that is being collected so what's the use of just collecting data without the capability of analyzing them so the top layer is analysis you must be able to analyze the data that you are collecting using the monitoring tools and provide meaningful insight out of it only then you will be able to improve your system you will be able to fine tune and take your system's performance to the next level performance or availability or whatever metrics you are monitoring be it in the form of reports or or in the form of some alerting that you want to do analysis have to be done with the data collected there is no point in collecting the data and keeping it as simple silos without analyzing it possibly at some later point you will need initially you may not know when you collect the data where it is going to be useful but when a problem occurs you might have to drill down to the exact root cause where the data will be useful and you must have the system in place for it the tool must be capable of analyzing so observability is the base only if the system is observable you can monitor and with the monitored data don't keep them aside any data that you collect have to be useful do analysis on top of it so what do i have to do with sre and observability so what is sre i think uh, um, the previous speaker shan clearly explained about uh, sres devops the roles and he being an sre himself he was able to give his perspective too i was able to relate so i thought okay this portion he has taken care of his, in, in his talk as well so how do i mean all of us have a different definition or different uh, interpretations but it all boils down to the devops and sre are two sides of the same coin that's how i see it as if devops is about what to do sre is about how to do them so that's how i see them as and uh, these are some roles and definitions for what devops does and what sre does so devops is connecting the development and operations which follows set of principles and they their primary focus is the delivery product delivery speed well sre is more ops oriented their focus is towards production they handle incidents if there is some some something goes wrong they are responsible for that incident they take ownership and they they look into what the problem is they go they go ahead automating and and uh, reducing the faults reducing the um, for, um uh, reducing the problem in the system they monitor the all the alerts that are being triggered so the primary focus is reliability that's why it is sre so to put it in uh, the java terminologies sre implements devops so the devops is more like set of principles and sre implements them so what does this have to do with observability so observability as we have been saying it is more with the help of tools sre also needs tools using which they will be able to collect all the metrics so when they have when i have to say the sre they collect they need to know what is happening in the cloud architecture so these are the different layers in the in any cloud architecture and the sre has to have an end to end visibility of what is happening across all these layers so it starts with the end user layer then the application layer platform layer infrastructure layer because the problem could be anywhere in this layer so it is only if they have a full only if they have a hands on or only if they have the data across all these layers the sre will be able to make sense out of it and they will be able to do some correction when something goes wrong so in that case these are the different layers of any cloud architecture the topmost is the end user layer which is the browsers using which either the web browser or the mobile apps using which the application is connected the next layer is the application layer this is nothing but the saas layer software as a service the this actually hosts the business logic and if you are a business owner you have to focus only on this and make use of all the other services that are available platform as a service so they are caching servers no sql queues microservices all these comes under the platform layer that also have to be monitored the bottom most is your infrastructure layer which is your physical servers be it your virtual servers cloud servers load balancer firewall network router switch everything forms the infrastructure layer and again this also has to be monitored so any application if you take typically it will it will come and any system if you take it can be classified in this four layers and all of these layers have to be monitored and the sre has to have the details of end to end visibility of what is happening in all these layers that is when it will make their life easy and they have to depend on tools for that so with that discussed 
let's move on to the pillars of observability. So I'm sure all, we, all of you know this. So just a quick overview of the three pillars of observability. Whatever we have discussed so far will fit into these three pillars itself. And I'll talk in a bit detail about these three in the upcoming slides too. First pillar is metrics. It could be your response time or it could be your throughput. It could be your database call um, time. All those forms metrics. Traces. The trace of where the problem exactly happens. That is important. And then logs. Logs is picking up in this distributed world. Logs are important for so many different things. I'll be talking in detail in the next slides. So these three are the three pillars of observability. And if SRE has to achieve this, achieve this observability, what the how how uh, how it can be done and what they have to do. So that's what I'm going to discuss now. So achieving observability, let's get one at uh, each one at a time. So first is about metrics. So when you take metrics, as I already said, of these four layers, the metrics vary. Depending on what is the component you are monitoring, your metric name or metric definition varies. If you are going to monitor a website or the front end of the um, browser, what, uh, what is the ISP that is behind? So that is a metric. And what time it takes for you to load the doc, uh, document download and document uh, loading time, what, what is the time taken for that? What is the first byte time that take, it takes for a page to receive the response from the server? So those are all the metrics if you have to monitor your front end. And if you have to monitor your application, what is the method, method response time? How many times this method is being called? What is the response time it takes to reach a third party component? Those will be the metrics. If you're taking an infrastructure component, if it is a server, you need to measure the CPU, memory, disk utilizations. If it is a router, you need to measure the packet sent, packet received. So depending on what you're monitoring, the metrics will vary. And all these will come under this one section called as metrics. So what are the different types of metrics that you will be collecting? So I, I just have five different types that are important that you have to collect. First is availability metrics. The uptime metrics of all these components is my infrastructure components up and running, is my platform components up and running. So uptime metrics have to be collected. And then security metrics have to be collected. We are all talking about cloud and digital adoption. Security is important. Are you using any SSL certificate? How, how long is, um, um, in what time period will the SSL certificate expire? You have to be notified of it. If you are owning a domain, in what time period the domain will expire? You have to be notified of that as well. Are there any malware in your, in your website? Is the content, is somebody trying to enter or change the content in your website? Those are all the security metrics that have to be monitored. And this is picking where importance in the, as we move towards cloud and as we are moving towards the digital trans, digital journey. Then performance metrics, the response time. So this we have talked a lot about this. The key performance indicators, the performance is nothing but your speed. Whatever component you take, they have to be performing very quickly. Performance is your response time. Because all of us know that if it is going to take more time, we don't have the patience to sit and see. If it is going to take some, if a web page is going to take 10 seconds, we will not, we will not, 10 seconds is, is also we don't wait. We just move on to next pages. So nobody has the time or patience to sit with slow pages, which means slow is the new down. There's no point in having all your resources up and running if they are going to be performing slow. So performance metrics have to be collected. And then scalability metrics. You may start, have, start as a startup and you want to scale. And when you talk about scalability, there's, there is both vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. When there are more number of users that are going to visit your website, you may have to increase the uh, component, increase your uh, servers. That Those metrics have to be collected. And if your system has the potential of additional, you can add some RAMs and RAM additionally, that's the vertical scaling. So those metrics have to be collected if you want to take care of your load in your in your system and plan for capacity planning. And then cost metrics have to be collected. This often we miss when we move, move to the cloud, be it any cloud provider you take. First time when you sign up, you give your credit card details. With that, the payment is being taken care of by some other department. You don't worry about it. But are you sure 
your resources you are using it to the fullest extent most of the time the unwanted resources we pay for it so that has to be monitored if you are using some two three servers or all the servers you utilized fully or is there something that you can reduce can you reduce the um, size of the server or can you reduce the number of servers itself where possibly you you would have auto scaled and added more servers during your peak load time are you taking care to downsize it those are some metrics that have to be measured and cost is important metric so th these comes under the metrics let's move on to traces so what you have to do with respect to trace trace is trace when we have to talk about traces there is one thing important that i want to talk how the application architecture has moved so what used to be a monolithic architecture where everything is in in a system is in one one system it's one system be it, even though there are components we have business logic we have data access layer we have user interface we have a data scheduling as a separate component but all of them are one monolith system so if something goes down everything goes down this used to be few years ago from this architecture we have now moved to the microservice architecture where each component can function on its own and they can function on a container they can function they can function on its own they can be deployed they can be brought down they can be up upgraded everything can be done independently so this might look very simple this might look very um, cool neat okay it looks very uh, nice to do but the complexity lies in the in monitoring such an environment because you will never know where the problem has occurred what is the root cause it's very difficult to find the root cause until you have the proper tools in place in such a system because the the, uh, the server is spawned quickly you won't have that system again to go and find out what the problem is so microservice architecture though it looks very simple it is complex to monitor unless you have the perfect tool set in your hand so when when we talk about this the traces is important tracing across the different tiers so we can categorize the, the grids as the web client layer and then the, the client layer and then the web, web app servers where the client request comes um, all of us will have these segregations in your deployment where you have this uh, web app server which request which which responds only to client request and for doing any data scheduling or for data collections or for data processing and data analysis you have different grids that accesses the database this is a simple grid architecture of any cloud deployment for traces the tool must be able to give you the complete trace of what up to the line of code where the problem happens in the web server to the database call which is causing an issue so that needs to be tracked be it in a monolith system or in a microservice architecture system tracing is important and in a microservice architecture it is even more complicated you have to have the distributed tracing in place because each component can be in its own platform one one will be written in java the other one will be written in dotnet the other component will be in nodejs but the calls will happen through all these interconnected uh, architecture so you must your tool must be capable of doing distributed tracing across these microservice architecture to tell you where the problem is in that situation tracing is important so we covered metrics what are all the different types of metrics that are required and we covered traces as well moving on to logs logs why is logs picking up or why is logs important in this distributed architecture where your uh, your app servers are distributed across the globe it is not possible for the sre or for any it person to log into each of the machines across the data centers and find out what the problem is all of us when something when something happens or when something goes down the first place to look at is logs there are different application logs and different types of logs but it is not possible for you to go and look at the place look at different data centers the different machines across the globe so it has to be consolidated in one place and you must be able to make quick queries and make meaningful insight out of it that is possible with the help of tools so be it any platform the logs have to be collected real time processing has to be done and then analyze them and store it in such a way that it is easy for you to query so converting the unstructured data into a structured one is what is being taken care of by logs and there are many vendors who does only log management so logs is also important that's why it has become a pillar for observability 
an out of the box support for all the common applications there are hundreds of applications that we have and make sure the tool gives you out of the box support for them and uh, not just to debug issues the other place where log is useful is for auditing because we are talking about security but with security you have to go and look at all the logs during your audit time because those are these are the evidences people will say people will come and say i did not do any change how did this change happen in the system you must have the record in place to prove them or to show them that who has done the change when did they do what change was done so for all those information where did they do the change this information are important during auditing and that is also a part of logging logging also helps in that so in a nutshell observability can be categorized as the metrics that we collect the traces and the logs these three are important for observability and this is achievable using monitoring tools monitoring tools help you achieve it there are many monitoring tools shawn also discussed about the pros and cons of two different monitoring tools that they have evaluated and why they went with the um one tool versus the other there are many tools in the world site 247 is also one such one so the last section is about the future of observability so i have talked about observability and the uh, sre's importance and about the pillars and how to achieve them a quick overview of what is the future and what is there um based on my experience or what i feel is important what we feel is important is what i'm going to talk here there are three things that i'll be talking about here quick overview one is ai the first part is ai how ai can help in observability or how ai can help sres and about function as a service how how the architecture is monolith we talked about monolith to microservices now it's actually confirm it, it's actually transforming to serverless so that is that's going to be future you have to adapt to that and then about uh, ice i just keep it as ice i'll give you the expansion when i talk about that okay so quick overview of each of these sections how ai ops can help sre there are various ways ai can help ai is not something new and it has been used in various fields and if you use it correctly it can do beautiful things for us the only important thing or one of the important things with respect to ai is training the system if you train the system exhaustively with accurate data points you will get the correct results garbage in is going to give you garbage out if you are not going to train the if the system is trained with garbage data you cannot get the results accordingly so it is important to train the system with accurate data points that's the primary thing to focus or remember when we have to talk about ai because ai only does what the humans feed into it the engine only is capable of the engine is not capable of doing anything on its own it can only perform based on how it is fed into so that's the only crux thing that you have to remember so these are some quick ways in which ai can help is sorry because uh, there are uh, there are metrics being collected from various monitoring tools and you have all the past history available with you ai can help in giving feedback saying to, uh, last year at the same time this was uh, this uh, you you request uh, you, i mean the system required additional servers possibly you may have to do that now possibly during a sale new year sale or a, a year end sale it could have done you would have done that during last year so the ai system will be able to read that if you have fed that to correctly it can process and it can help you in assist you in decision making and you can add more servers so it can give it can help by promoting feedback enabling communication see communication is important all of us have to communicate the tools have to communicate so there are chatbots available people don't want to move from what they have already so there must be chatbots that could be integrated with your system to bring in the alerts from the monitoring tool into your system itself so that is that is possible using ai chatbots and managing a flurry of alerts you get a huge amount of alert the first level segregation ai will be able to do based on the past history it can uh, segregate based on severity of the issue and assign the technician based on how technicians have been assigned earlier and manage your alerts so that is possible using ai data correlation across tools i'm sure all of you must be uh, using multiple tools and you have to do some data correlation in which case ai will help 
evaluate the past performance as i said about the feedback uh, uh, during the uh, first point so based on what is there during in your past what you have done the tool can help in evaluating such performance and tell you what you are doing is correct or what changes you need to bring in correlating test results we do various types of test we have different grid setups and we do various types of test we do the development testing we do regression testing we do the production environment testing live setup testing so you need to correlate the test results to make sure that nothing goes wrong in your production which ai can help fine tune deployment strategies there are different deployments there is a staging server there is a testing setup there is a final production setup so one change in one one configuration change in one place might not you support there is a possibility that you might miss that out when you go for the main production so that fine tuning ai can help in across multiple deployment strategies that you have not just these different setups if you are if you are a organization who is hosting or who's having data centers across the globe and regionally then you have to sync up your deployment strategies across the multiple regions as well so in those cases ai can help and as i already said exhaustive training to prevent false alerts self training can be done based on the corrections that you are suggesting self training can be done and that is what is important these are different ways ai can help so ai and the future of ai is going to be more of um what do you say it from being proactive from being reactive the ai is moving to being proactive so it used to be a stage where some problem has occurred go and see what the issue is why it has occurred that is being reactive from that stage the world is moving towards stop from this problem from occurring itself so the, for that for being that proactiveness ai is definitely helpful and then when you choose tool i to i talked about ice right so look for ice so what does it mean i stands for integrability you are not going to see we are not going to replace the tools that we already have no company would do or no nobody would want to do that so the new tool that you are bringing in should be able to talk with the existing system and give meaning or generate meaning out of it and even the tool that you are having you must be able to have open source integrations with other third parties suppose that suppose you are using a monitoring tool and you have a separate ticketing system you were, your tool must be capable of integrating with the ticketing system for any alert that has happened here and you must be able to send sms notification and uh, email notification voice call notification all those are different providers so all those integrations must be possible so that is very very important in when you when you choose a tool and what is c customizability nobody wants to use the tool as it is there must be some customization possible you must be able to change a button or you must be able to white label and remove the existing logo and use your logo you may want to change a text anything must be possible so those customization don't have a rigid one give customizations and that is important look for customizations that is very important as shan was also talking about there were low customizations in some products the pros and cons there are other uh, based on your business need you can look and you can choose and what is e extensibility so we are living in an era of citizen coders nobody want to take the code and use it as it is they want to extend it further i want to build my own dashboard i don't want to use the one that you have given i want to drag and drop and build my own dashboard it should work and lot of this open tracing is picking up i don't want to, or um, your agent to sit, sit in inside my system vendor neutral open telemetry agent is already available is your system capable of extending on top of it is your ca system capable of integrating with it those are some things the world is moving towards so those capability should be possible so remember integrability customizability and extensibility is is important when you choose a tool or in the tools that you are using in the tools that you are producing the last one is about the function as a service so as i already said we are moving from monolith we moved from monolith to microservices now microservices to serverless is what is the future that we are seeing because we don't want any servers all that you can do is possible using functions there are providers who give this function as a service and you must be able to monitor them monitoring the function as a service is very critical 
and include that as part of your system if you are moving towards that that is going to be the future of observability as well so these are some three points that i wanted to talk about the future the ai and the um, ice and function as a service so with that i've come to the end of my presentation so i've talked about the experience uh, why experience is important and uh, all about observability there are various monitoring tools in the market and sci 24 7 is one such tool that is an all-in-one ai powered platform that lets you take care of all your monitoring needs from one single console so we do have for all the layers we have classified we have website monitoring, we have application performance monitoring, we have uh, real user monitoring, we have application log management, we have server monitoring, cloud network, cloud spend for cost analysis and status IQ for transparent communication. So uh, I just leave with this so that you can try it your, out yourself to see the benefits. There are 10 different data centers. Sci24-7 is on top of Zoho. And this is not something new. We have been in business for the past 15 years now. Zoho as a company has been in business for 25 years now. And we have 10 different data centers across the globe. You can choose to which data center you want to locate so that your data resides within your geographical boundary. It doesn't go out of the geographical boundary. We have one in US, one in uh, Europe, one in India, one in China, one in Australia, both primary and a secondary data center is available. And security and compliance, we do take it very seriously. We undergo stringent audit process and we are certified with all the standards that are available that are needed to run a cloud company. So the key takeaways from this session, if I have to say, importance of digital experience and the experience is important, observability pillars and achieving them, future is in AI ops, eyes and the function as a service, how Site 24 seven can aid SREs in achieving observability. So before I finish, I just have one quote that I wanted to say, this could be generally applicable anywhere too. So this is called as a uh, Red Queen's quote. If you can go and search, you will be able to get this one. So this is from the famous book, Alice in Wonderland. I'm sure we must all have studied that. I didn't, I didn't read the book when I was a child, but I read it for my children. So there is a quote, there is a saying in this book, which goes like this. You have to be running as fast as you can in order to stay in the same place. And if you want to make any progress, you have to run twice as fast as you can. This is my one of my favorite quotes too. Why I'm saying this is the technology is moving or it's growing in such pace. So in any of the work that we do, we have to keep adapting. We have to keep updating ourselves in order to stay in the same place, right? If you, if you don't do that, you are left behind. And if you want to make progress, you have to run twice as fast as you can. So as a company, we do take all these... Uh, um, seriously and we look ahead and look how the world is going to be down the line and invest a lot in R&D and we have a separate AI lab, lab that does all the AI activities and try to incorporate that into our product and make sure give always keep customer in the front and give their experience as a priority and take it forward. So thank you for your time. Before I close, just uh, take a screenshot or I think uh, the um, Avinash or the op moderator uh, Tom could uh, paste this in the chat box as well. So this is a complimentary URL. If you sign up using this URL to our product, you get uh, six months free subscription. So I didn't get into the product details because I want you people to try the product yourself and give us feedback or let us know what, what is missing or what is uh, what you want more we can take it forward. So thank you so much for your time. With that, uh, I can take questions. Thanks, Raji. That was a brilliant talk. Um, I think we have one question quite specific from, from Maya. Um, tracing is important, and this is underrated at companies and in clients that she's worked with. She can attest to the usefulness of end-to-end -end tracing for tackling anything from bugs, performance issues, services being down. But how can you encourage the wider adoption of tracing 
not just for SRE and DevOps, but also other teams such as devs and QA? Yes, um, very good question. Yeah, I understand your uh, pain points here. Tracing is important. As I said earlier, uh, during the, my initial uh, talk, so people often say, you're not using this field, you are not using this metric at all. Why should I collect? Why should I collect? See, if, every time we may not be able, we may not be going and looking into the system, but when a problem occurs and you need to find out what is the root cause, tracing is important. But it is it is a trade off. So you it is like uh, when you when you want to move towards the um, larger enterprises where you get uh, um, as long as you are an SMB, people may not worry about it. When you when you cater to enterprises and when you get huge loads and you have real performance problems where it is not even seconds, it is going to minutes. When your page load or your application response time is going to take minutes to um, minutes to respond that is when people will look into and that is going to be late and you're going to lose customers it is more in educating them i've seen a lot of our customers and we we ourselves have faced faced those problems but when we get with a high-end deal and we are not able to proceed because because of performance issues that's when they realize so it is more like but i would i should say the companies or organizations have started realizing it. Performance is important. Otherwise, it is you. You will not be able to even rank in your uh, um, search engine pages uh, when you don't come in the first page. How many of us go to the second page in any search engine? We don't do right first page, maximum second page. Otherwise, in some of the links, we just click, we are done. So, if you have to come up, your response time is important. So, those are some metrics which. Possibly, I'm not sure if uh, you want to convince your management or uh, whom you want to talk to. These are some pointers which you can tell them. They will definitely understand and uh, it is important. Possibly, you can say, if not for all the servers, that is something that people do. If not for the, you, if you have five servers in your, uh, in one grid, possibly enable it in one or two servers and see where the problem is and then take it up for other servers. And there are tools where there, where you can uh, dynamically switch on and off. Um, you can do end-to-end -end tracing during the particular time period. So that is also possible. And uh, you, um, so yes, that's, that's something which is a mindset change, I should say, and that comes through experience, through facing failures, through losing customers because of performance issues. That's that's how people learn. Uh, Mai's got another question. Um, when it comes to monitoring tools, would data slash storage transfer slash usage be a common restriction, e.g. versus cost? Perhaps a question for both Sean and Raji. When it comes to monitoring tools, would data storage or transfer usage be a common restriction? Okay, this this again, um, at least I could say from our tool perspective, this depends on where you use the tool. Um, what is, I don't know what is EG, cost. So that um, there are certain tools where for uh, the cost is, it is charged separately for the data storage, for data transfer, data usage, things like that happen. But you will have to go through the, cost details clearly to find out how on what basis the tool is charging you. Suppose I can say in our case, we say it is a monitor. So server is a monitor. So server monitoring, all the metrics that come under that are covered in that one monitor. It's not charged separately based on the data transfer or the storage and things like that. So from it varies from tool to tool and um, i'm sure uh, people will have it explained at least in site 24 7 we have a pricing page where we explain clearly what is a basic monitor what is an advanced monitor what is being collected and the metrics that are being collected all the tools have the if there is specific uh, cost for data uh, transfer or storage storage it will be clearly mentioned and that is again based on your business needs i'm not, I'm not saying every business will be able to take and uh, use um, your the tool in all the places so based on your business needs you'll have to choose the right set of tools and uh, use it <laughs>